to avoid the conclusion that an intelligent force had had a hand in our creation, cosmologists invoked the principle of multiple universes. But what potential might those other universes hold for the evolution of complexity? We have no idea how much variety other universes might display. And since we have no contact with them, all we can say is that there must be certain potential for complexity in those universes. It's easy to imagine universes that would be less propitious for life than ours, but of course we may not be in the optimum universe in a sense. We can imagine universes that might be more propitious. These, of course, will be potentialities far beyond the powers of our brains to conceive, but we can't assume in this grander cosmos that there couldn't be other universes displaying more complexity than ours. Although we are completely cut off from these other universes, it's not impossible that one day we might be able to prove their existence. I think it's a question that we can't even address at the present. Um, I think we simply have to rely on the ingenuity of future, de of future um, generations of, of, of physicists, or whatever they are, call themselves at that time, uh, to, uh, to find their way into new ways of thinking about these things. The atomic theory was uh, put forward by, uh, by ancient Greeks uh, two and a half thousand years ago. Uh, it took a couple of thousand years to verify it. It would not surprise me if it takes some fraction of that kind of time before we really absolutely understand these ideas, before we become totally comfortable with these ideas, before we say these ideas are hard, absolutely hard science. But can we ever know what these other universes are like? Somewhere, among this infinite collection, there must be those similar to our own. And some of them will be less evolved and others much more advanced. We have some concept of how on Earth life has evolved and has from simple beginnings led to creatures like ourselves with at least a certain level of intelligence. There seems to have been a gradual increase in intelligence and human beings at some stage uh, surpassed other creatures, but we have no idea how inevitable that was. The four billion years of Darwinian evolution are now part of common culture, but most people nonetheless tend to think that human beings are in some sense the culmination. There's no particular reason to think that intelligence couldn't develop further. Astronomers know that our sun is less than halfway through its life. It'll be six billion years before the sun flares up, engulfing the inner planets, vaporizing any life that remains on Earth. But any life that remains at that time won't be humans. It'll be life at least as different from us as we are from bacteria, because there's as much time for future evolution on Earth and beyond before the sun dies, as there has been to get from the simplest organisms to us. So our future in this universe can tell us something about life in other more advanced universes. So what is the future for intelligence? I think we have the most complex nervous system on Earth. Related to that, we may consider us as the most intelligent species on Earth. Maybe in the universe, at least our universe, that could be. Uh, we started with a chimpanzee-like brain, and it tripled in, in size over a period of three, two, three million years. You might wonder whether there's any expansion possible. Michael Hoffman has studied the structure of our brain and asked, would a larger brain increase intelligence?
we did a study by comparing brain structures in, in primates, starting from very small, relatively primitive primates up to human beings. What you can do then is to extrapolate these findings to creatures which even have a larger brain than we had. To our surprise, after a particular brain size, something strange happened. There is some maximum in intelligence, in processing power, in cognitive abilities, but beyond that point, you find a decrease in number of structures in the brain. It will go along with a decrease in processing power and information processing, and therefore also with uh, intelligence. It seems that as the organ of intelligence, the brain has reached its limit. If it becomes bigger, communication between the different parts of the brain slow down, and it actually becomes less efficient. So it can't be, hardly be better than we do it now. That's in fact the conclusion of all these calculations. We can't change the technology of our brain. In a way, we are prisoners of our ancestors million years ago, as far as the evolution of the brain is concerned. So unless nature invents a new way for organic intelligence to evolve, it seems that in this universe, intelligence has reached its potential. But some scientists see organic intelligence as only the first stage in evolution. And the next stage, they believe, has already begun. For the first three or nearly four billion years, the driving force of increasing complexity on Earth was evolution, natural selection, sexual selection. But in recent times, in the last few thousand years, it's not evolution any longer, but it's our uh, cultural development uh, that has taken over. And now this has been uh, formalized into scientific and technological and medical development. That's where the action is right now. If we become more intelligent, it is because we will learn to use technology or maybe medicine to enhance uh, our own intellectual capacities. And that might happen within a matter of decades. In all these different ways, human beings will use their technical ingenuity to change and modify their own nature. And that's the transhuman phase of our development, which we're just beginning to enter. Um, uh, at the dawn of this new millennium. Technology already infiltrates almost every aspect of our lives. But philosophers like Nick Bostrom believe that technology could gradually replace our lives and that the change will be almost imperceptible. A lot of people might choose to change to different medium, um, computational hardware medium, where you wouldn't suffer aging, where you're processes of uh, thinking could be speeded up enormously um, where you could um, transport yourself at the speed of light as information pattern um, where you could make copies backup copies of yourselves you would start by replacing a small bit of the brain maybe a single nerve cell with a computer uh, processor that would do the same thing and then you could replace uh, larger and larger parts and eventually it would consist of silicon and that sounds really scary and bad but if at no point in this process you noticed any difference and if you ended up with just the same mental life as you had before then you might think it doesn't really matter so much whether I'm made of silicon or carbon what's inside my skull or indeed whether I have a skull or my whole mental life is implemented on a computer but what matters rather is what you think and feel and do and how you relate to others. Technology could take intelligence beyond the natural capacity of our biological brains. Through technology, our universe could evolve superintelligence. The concept of superintelligence roughly means 
um, any kind of intellect that vastly outstrips anything that's possible for humans to do. It wouldn't just be a really clever human. It would be um, a large, uh, by, by a huge amount, uh, superior task. There wouldn't be a confusion about whether it really was very smart or not. Um, it, it would be on a completely different level.